Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the 4 Movie Theater 4K Triple Laser Projector. Full disclosure before we begin, this projector was sent to me by Nothing Projector on behalf of ProjectorScreen.com. However, it's not a sponsored video, no money has changed hands, and all opinions expressed are mine and mine alone. However, I would like to thank them for sending this in to me for review. I will have links down in the description. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I give my verdict on whether or not I think you should buy this one, as there is one very cool feature that I think you'll appreciate. So let's get on with the video. So the 4 Movie Theatre has a few unique features that set it apart from most other ultra short throw projectors. The standout for me is that this projector is certified for and supports Dolby Vision, which is really interesting because not many projectors can do this. I tested it out on my Zidu with Black Adam. Terrible movie, but great visuals and audio. And yes, the Dolby Vision logo comes up right away. The other main selling points for me with this projector are that it is quite bright at 2800 ANSI lumens and has the ALDP4 laser light engine, which can support up to 107% of the BT2020 color space. And the black levels are great with a 3000 to 1 contrast ratio. However, I will say that this is only relevant in a completely light controlled environment. Specs wise, it's an average size and weight for an ultra short throw and does come in a nice dark color suitable for a dark room with a throw ratio of 0.23 to 1, which is pretty standard. And as such, I was able to place it in my ultra short throw setup, only having to do minor keystoning to get it aligned. As I always say, avoid keystoning at all costs, but for this review, minor keystone adjustments are fine. As I mentioned, there is a 4K triple laser light source, so no color wheel needed, which does cut down on the noise quite a bit, as well as give very vibrant colors. Especially after I calibrated the projector with my sensor and the 4 movie theater can produce an image from 80 inches all the way up to 150 inches. There is also a special tech on board to reduce laser speckle and I did notice right away that the image was very clean and artifact free. On the back of the projector we have power, USB, SP diff as well as three HDMI inputs, with one of them having eARC support and HDMI 2.1 support for 4K 120Hz. The remote is rather basic and typical of most Android TV based projectors I have reviewed. Nothing fancy here, but if you plan on using this with your Apple TV or Blu-ray player instead of the built-in Android TV OS, likely you will be using your own remotes anyway. There is no Netflix on this projector due to licensing, but as I mentioned, I would recommend using your own device anyway with this projector. If you do plan on using the built-in OS, you can get access to the App Store, but keeping consistent with what I always say, I would skip anything on board and use your own players for a better experience. Same goes with the speakers. There are Bowers & Wilkins full range 15 watt speakers on board, which sounded pretty good. However, as a theater projector, I have it connected to my Yamaha receiver and my Crick speakers for a much more cinematic experience. Although, if you don't have an external speaker system, I will say that these are one of the most capable built-in speakers on a projector that I've heard so far. Having Android TV OS 11 means that all of the menu options are standard and familiar, and there are a lot of options to tune the projector, both in terms of using it as a player, as well as using it as a display, and also tuning various elements of the image, brightness, color calibration, focus, and keystone correction. You can mount this projector in a variety of ways. However, the most practical is of course, just sitting it on a TV unit in front of a screen. So after installing the projector and running through the focus adjustments and the keystoning options, I ripped into the menu options to see what the projector supported. And I noticed right away a full suite of calibration options. 
This was a welcome change from most projectors I review, which have locked settings. And I was able to adjust the color temp or grayscale, which affects the correctness of the image in terms of brightness, but also colors which are the RGB CMY. The interesting thing here is that it's not a universal calibration. So you need to make adjustments for each of the different modes, being SDR, HDR, and Dolby Vision, with varying degrees of options depending on the mode. As Dolby Vision is reliant on a bright display, you can even set your screen gain and screen size, which helps with the projector to calculate how much light is needed for a more accurate image. I calibrated in SDR and then moved the settings across to all of the different color modes and that seemed to work fine for me. I did test the presets but ultimately found that the calibration I did with my sensor yielded the best results. If you don't have a sensor, don't worry, the movie mode for me was the closest to my calibration and I think you will be able to find a mode that suits your room the best. The calibration did find that the blue laser was slightly overpowered and this has been the the case in pretty much every single laser projector I've tested. I have to say that the image was very impressive. As I ran through the various demos, I was struck by how cinematic the image was and how it really didn't feel like an ultra short throw projector, but rather like a standard projector in a dedicated room. The Dolby Vision rendition was excellent and the few movies I watched worked seamlessly with the tone mapping, adding that extra vibrancy that Dolby Vision is known for. I found though for Netflix that I had to set the Apple TV to Dolby Vision for it to play Dolby Vision content, whereas with my Zidu player, it would switch modes between SDR, Dolby Vision, and HDR10. However, this is not really a big deal, as usually on a projector, you don't even get to see Dolby Vision rendered. The nighttime performance of this projector is really quite stunning, and I can see why this projector won the projector shootout last year. And on my channel, I have reviewed a lot of UST projectors, and this one does rank right up there as one of the best, if not the best one that I've tested so far. Some of the other features of this projector are ALLM, which is for ultra low latency mode for gaming. Although I never game on a UST, and my kids don't seem to mind the higher latency. And as it's named the 4 Movie Theatre, I personally think it's best suited for the movie watching experience. There is also MEMC, which in layman's terms adds artificial smoothing to the picture to reduce stuttering. I'm not a huge fan of MEMC, but I do like to have it set to low just to take the edge off and make the image more watchable. It will just come down to your personal preference. So like I always do with these reviews, I used my window of death to test out the daytime performance of this projector. Bear in mind that I have a very good screen being the Elite Screen's Aeon CLR, which is an excellent light rejection screen. And as you will see, the projector, even though it is super bright, does struggle a little. This is more due to my room than anything. These windows next to the screen literally smash the screen with light. But with the shutters down, the image comes back to life and is very watchable during the day. I ended up watching a couple of things over the weekend during the day to test it out and combined with this screen, I found the image quite acceptable. Where this projector really shines is in a light controlled room. And I can say I was super impressed with just how cinematic the image was. Once the image was corrected after calibration, it just looks sensational, right up there with some of the best images that I've seen from a projector. And that includes standard throw projectors as well. Having an ALR screen certainly helps with the image performance, but it did seem that everything that I'd heard about this projector was pretty accurate. You can see from the videos that I've recorded just how vibrant and vivid the image is. The colors and contrast is really quite striking. So who is this projector for and would I recommend you to buy it? First of all, this projector is definitely suitable in a dedicated room. I think that the image it gives is definitely worthy of a dedicated room. And if you find a way to place it under your screen without impacting on your speakers, then I think this is certainly a worthy candidate. In terms of whether I can recommend it, I think that the price for performance is certainly there and even better than some projectors I have tested, which are significantly more expensive. Pricing is as follows. In Australia, where I am, it comes in at $4,499. 
in Europe, the price is 2,999 euros. And in the USA, if you buy direct from projectorscreen.com, you can pick it up for $2,999 and on Amazon for $34.99. I have been told that the price from projectorscreen.com is going to rise very soon. So if you're in the market for a very high quality cinematic ultra short throw 4K triple laser projector, make sure you check the links in the description. I'd like to thank Nothing Projector and projectorscreens.com for sending this ultra short throw in for review. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with it and preparing the review for the channel. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to see my future content. I'd like to thank you all for watching, but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.